Welcome back to the Haas Online Training Series. In this session, we're going to take a look at how to create a custom indicator inside of the Visual Script Editor. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. The first thing we need to do is open up the Visual Script Editor. To do that, all we're going to do is hover on the left-hand side and click Visual Editor. Once it's loaded, you'll see the Select slash Create Script uh, field here and then some settings on the left. Let's go ahead and make sure that these are set to something we're willing to work with. So in this case, I will be using BTC Perpetual and my simulated Darabit account. To start, all we have to do is click the New Script button and under Type, click Indicator Command. This will give us a nice little template to base everything off of. So let's go ahead and call it My Cool RSI as the indicator we're going to make is a variation of the Mad Hatter RSI indicator. Let's go ahead and click New. Once that's done, you'll get these fields that pop up. Now we'll get into depth on each one of these blocks, but what you should see is a define command, define easy indicator parameters, a define easy indicator output, and a plot block. Now don't worry, it might seem like a lot now, but we'll definitely be able to figure out how these all work together. Now I think the first thing we need to do is discuss how the RSI indicator is going to work. Now to make this easy, we're going to just have some general rules that most people follow throughout um, general trading. So if the RSI is below the buy level and it's rising, meaning the price is going up, we're going to go ahead and signal long. If the previous RSI level is below the buy level and rising, then we also signal long. If the RSI is above the sell level and falling, we'll signal short. And if the previous RSI is above the sell level and falling, then we also signal short, else we signal none. Now, I know that sounds like a bit, but let's go ahead and get a notepad here. And if we open up notepad, we can just go ahead and write this out real quick. So, as we said before, if the RSI is below the buy level and rising, then we want to signal long. If the previous RSI is below the buy level and rising, we also signal long. If the RSI is above the sell level and falling, we want to signal short. And if the previous RSI is above the sell level and falling, we're going to want to signal short. Else, no signals. Pretty straightforward. Hopefully that doesn't um, catch you off guard when we start looking at this. So now that we know how we want to build the RSI indicator, Let's go ahead and start by explaining what these initial blocks are. All right, so let's go ahead and start taking a look at these different blocks. Now, the first one's the define command block. Now, this is really where we're going to define the actual name of the command. That way, we can use it in different areas like the Visual Script Editor, or when we actually search for the command, we can find it. Now, scripts, Visual Script names, and the commands that they hold can be different, but in this case, we want them to be the same. So the first field is the name. We'll just go ahead and say my cool RSI. And the second one is a description. For this case, we're just going to leave it blank. The next one is the easy indicator parameters. Now, you'll notice that this is for the chart index. And this is, if you remember from previous videos where we discuss what the chart index means and where the values will show up, whether above or below or on the price chart, this is where that will go. And for, for now, we'll just set this to 1. The next one is the easy indicator output. Now the easy indicator output takes three um, values or a, should I say, it takes an array, which we'll get to use a block called merge, which I think will be very cool later on. But basically what we're going to use this for is this is the last part of our indicator. This is what defines should we buy, should we short, or should we do nothing at all. Finally, there's this plot block. Now normally this would be used to show uh, the values we want on the chart specifically, but I'm actually going to show you how to use a different one moving forward. So hopefully that gives you a quick explanation. So enough of the initial talks, let's go ahead and start building this thing. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is we need to find some inputs. Now these are the values that will be used in the indicator to decide certain things. Now with RSI, there's a few things we need to find. We need to find a length, which is uh, the RSI length itself. We need to set a buy value and a sell value. So that's three different inputs. Let's go ahead and find them. So to find them, we just go in commands and we're going to type in input and we're going to pick the first one. Now let's try to keep it a little organized here. 
and let's give this one the value of length and a default value of 12. Now we can put a tooltip help here so we could, you know, when you hover over this, it'll tell you, or should I say inside of the settings window, it'll show like what this value's for, but we'll leave them blank for now. Let's go ahead, open up another one and we'll name this one by level and we'll set this at 30 and then let's do one more and this will be our cell level. And let's set this to 70 by default. All right, so now that we have the input set, let's go ahead and start connecting everything. Now, the first thing we need to do is to get some close prices. Now, we can do this on whatever we want, open, close, high, or low periods. But for this case, I want the uh, close prices. So we're going to right click here, go to others, and then let's just scroll down until we find close prices. It should be right around here. And you'll notice that it immediately connects. The next thing we need to do is we need to actually say from the close prices, we want to get those into an RSI. Now we could right click and add it to an RSI indicator or we can just search here like I have here, click RSI and go ahead and drag that over. Now one of the things we can do is we can drag input over this way to period. Now we can do that, however, there is a nicer way to do this. Let's get rid of this. There's a nice way to do this. We can right click here and say, see if I can get it. We right click the dot and say change to field. And then what we can do is we can use a little shortcut. If we put pound and then the name of the input, it's a shortcut. When the pot gets processed, the value from this input right here, that's name length, will immediately be added here. This is a nice way where we can condense the amount of dragging and dropping we do between inputs and the different um, values. All right, now that we have the RSI values from the close prices at the current interval, we need to do two things. The first thing we need to do is we need to save that value so we can use it somewhere else in the script without having to drag some lines around like crazy, making a mess. The next thing we need to do is we need to plot that value along with the buy and sell levels nicely on a chart. Now I did say earlier that we weren't going to use this plot here we were going to go ahead and use something nicer. So let's go ahead and get rid of that first. Now, the first thing I mentioned is we need to save that value. So we're going to use session set. And what this lets us do is it lets us save a value with a given name so we can pull it somewhere else in the script. So let's just name this RSI and connect that there. Now we can go ahead and make it nice by dragging it around. And now what this will let us do is if we use session get, we can put that name in there and then we get that value wherever we want within the visual script page. Now let's look at the plotting. Now we could have used the normal plot and drag and drop everything manually, but we do have a nicer version called a plot line by cell zone. Now in order to find it, one of the first things you need to remember is look at command set. This is a filter on all the current commands available. And if you want to avoid some funny mistakes like I had earlier, make sure you set this to all commands. Once you've clicked there, then we can go ahead and search plot line and you'll see plot line by zone shows up. Let's go ahead, put that right here, nice and neat. And we're going to drag this RSI to source. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to change these to the field names. So we're going to go ahead and put part chart index, which will come from here. We're going to do the start, which we are also going to change to a field and do the by level. And then we're going to go ahead and change this to, oops, to a cell level. And then, whoop, looks like we didn't dis we disconnected it. And there you go. So now that we got that done, we can get rid of this because I was an error from the previous drag we can start on working the logic itself. Okay, so now due to the way that we have our RSI logic, we're gonna kinda have to work with this backwards forwards. And what I mean by that is, is we're gonna start by doing the previous RSI value logic, and then halfway through, we're gonna actually begin doing the current RSI value. Because if you remember our current rules, is the previous RSI value and the current RSI value can both trigger longs depending on which direction they go. So we're just gonna kind of move this bit by bit. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and put in a array get. So if we put this array get in, this will let us go ahead and grab a specific value 
within the array. Now the RSI returns a array of RSI values with the index starting at one and the newest RSI value will be at one and then the further back you go in the RSI array will be the older the values are from each interval period. So that might sound like a lot, but don't worry. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drag prices into input and then here, let's go ahead and change this field to a number and put that two. That will get us our previous RSI value. Now, let's say you didn't want to do that. You wanted to go ahead and use the blocks because that's what you like to do. We can just go ahead and search for a number, number block, drag that in and hit the number two in there and then drag the line over. But for simplicity's sake, we're going to get rid of that and we're just going to go ahead and put this number two here. Okay, now that we have that, we are going to connect um, a few things. So we need two is bigger than, and that's because we wanna make, sh we wanna check if the RSI value and the previous RSI value are bigger than our cell level. And then we need two smaller thans to do if the current RSI price is below our buy level. I know it's starting to sound a little bit more complicated, but don't worry, it's not as bad as it sounds. So let's, let's start looking for some logic blocks. At least that's what they're called. Let's look for is bigger than under equations and we need two of them. So we're gonna grab one and then we're gonna grab two. So to do this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect the array get to the first is bigger than and then the raw RSI value to the second one. Let's try and make it a little neat here. And like I said, I know it's it's kind of confusing because we are having to do two bits of logic at the same time, but just look at it this way. This path moving north is our current RSI, and the path going through array get is the previous RSI value. That way we can use those. The next thing we want to do is we need the smaller than blocks. So is smaller than, and let's get two of these. And then we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to get this is smaller than that and then we're going to drag this one over to input and now you'll notice that all of these have a second input and this is actually where we're going to go ahead and do the previous trick we're going to change this to a field and put pound cell level and we're going to do that for the two is biggers whoops let's go ahead and get that into that fix some spelling up here then we're gonna do the same thing down here, but for the buy levels, since these are is smaller than. All right, that's looking pretty good. So now we have the first two pieces. If RSI is below the buy level, and if previous RSI is below the buy level, if RSI is above the sell level, and if previous RSI. So we have this first part of the logic nailed down. The next thing we need to do is the rising values, end rising, right? So let's go ahead and let's see how we're gonna go about adding is falling and is rising to this. Okay, so knowing that we have the is bigger than and is smaller than blocks logic, we need to put in a or statement because the logic states if the previous or the current is bigger than or if the previous or the current is smaller than to get our buy and sell area. So let's go ahead and look for an or block. Scroll down here into equations. And we're going to make two of these. We'll put that here. And we'll put that one here. And let's go ahead and just drag those in. And what this will do whoops, is make an or statement. And if you're not familiar with Boolean logic, I highly suggest you go and take a look at it because that's very important to how this is working. But for the sake of simplicity, if one of these is true, or if one of these is true, then this will be true. If not, then it will be false. So remember how I mentioned we needed to use the session set to get the RSI value to use it somewhere else. And this is where we need to use that. So we could drag from RSI all the way over here and have a line intersecting everything, or we can go ahead and use session get, put that right here nice and neat. All right, let's put it out here and then say RSI. So now the RSI value from here is available from this block. 
And this is where we're going to use the is rising or is falling. So let's go ahead and type in is rising. And if we look at this, you'll notice it says checks if the values are increasing towards the newest within the loopback period. It sounds a bit confusing. Don't worry. Is it going north from the previous to the current? So in this case is the previous RSI value lower than the current one and vice versa, depending on which direction we're going. So we're going to go ahead and say from that, we're going to say the array is this. And then our look back, which is how far in the past we want to look, we're just going to set this to one. And then we're going to do the same, but we need an is falling block here. And we're just going to do that past there. Change this field to one. All right, let me see if we can drag over here a little bit. So finally, what we need to do is we need to do an and block. So if this and this, then actually execute some logic. So what we're going to do is we're going to put an and block here. We're trying to complete the second half of this. If the buy level and rising or the previous buy level and rising, then we signal long and then this inverse for short. So let's look up an and block. Drag that over here. And we can say, or this. So if this is true and this is true, then this will be true, else it's false. So if these two are true and somehow is rising is false, then this will be false, if my bowling logic's correct. And then we're gonna need another one here. Put that there, that there. And yes, I know we could make this look a lot nicer, but for the sake of this, this will do for now. So now that we have our AND clauses, we can do the final bit. We can say the signaling part, the short or the long. So if we want to signal short, go ahead and put this in here and drag it over here. Now you'll notice there's something missing. There's a field here, and it's actually a hidden field that almost all blocks can have, and it's called connector. And basically this will take a value and you will be able to signal different things on it. Now whether it works or not really depends on what type of value it is, but we know a true or false will work in this case. And we'll just connect that to signal short. And let's go ahead and signal long here, like so. Oops, we forgot a step. Signal long. And then the last thing we need is a signal none. So there will be a no position state. Now we don't have to put this in here. This could just simply be a, a, always a bot that's always in position. But we want a bot that's capable of being out of a position. So basically what the saying is if both of these are false, then we want a signal none. And we say toggle connector. Connect that there. And, you know, I know we haven't been neat in the rest of the video. Let's go ahead and make it a little neater. And then remember how I said that now what we need to do is we need to pass them all to this indicator output. And there's a few ways we can do this. But the way I want to do it is with merge. And what merge lets us do is it lets us put a lot of values into a single array and then pass that to another um, parameter. So in this case, we want all of these values, signal none, signal long, signal short, into this and then we're going to just merge it into result. So we're going to click that, drag it over there, and that's it. This is how to make an indicator. Now, let's go ahead and make sure to click Save, or else we might lose all our work here. Now that we went ahead and saved our script, let's go ahead and try to run it. So if we click Quick, quick Backtest here, you'll notice that it says Backtesting and Backtest Completed, but nothing happened. No chart, no trades. Let's go ahead and look at our compile log. Now the compile log will pop up a little window here, and it'll tell you if everything succeeded or if there was errors and we can see here there's a blatant big error saying the script is invalid which meant we have a mistake somewhere missing input connection for plot line by cell zone parameter name so let's go ahead and scroll over there and you'll notice that not only do we have an error but the block itself is red showing us where the error is and sure enough we forgot to give this chart a name let's go ahead and change the field here and name it RSI or better yet my cool RSI. Let's go ahead and type that, hit save, and if all goes well, we should see 
everything will happen. We get our compile test OK, and if we click chart, after we run another back test, you'll see our RSI line, our buy and, our buy and sell, but something interesting happened. There's no trades and no profit. Now, here is one of the, the cruxes of any development of an algorithm, etc. We can only tell you when there's a, an error in the syntax or the way you've had something set up. When it comes to logic, that's part of the debugging process. Now, if you're paying attention, you'll notice that I made a very big mistake within our logic, specifically the second half of our logic. Go ahead and pause for a second if you didn't notice it. But if we read our logic, it says if the cell, if the RSI is above the cell level and falling signal short, and you'll notice that what we have is if the cell level is rising. So that means that it's there's never a case when a trade can occur. So how do we fix this? Well, thankfully the way this works is we can just delete these here. Swap them out. Reconnect them to the respective ones. Now that we have corrected that, there's only a few more things we have to do. The first thing we want to do is we need to increase our trade amount to the minimum for the exchange. So since I'm on Deribit, I know that with Haas, I need to make sure that's set to 10 contracts. Now, it's important to note that indicators themselves, custom indicators, don't actually process their signals. They expect to use their output to be processed later. So what we have to do is we actually have to add what's called a do signal here. We can see it's already search. Click it and then drag it over. And now what we do is we drag the merge result to do signal. Let's go ahead and save that and then back test. Now that our back test is complete, we can go ahead and look at the chart. And you notice we now have the sell signal or the buy signal showing up and the sell signals. And now if we want to see what those look like, we can open up the back test remote and hit trades. And now we'll actually have trades for all of them. And that's really all it takes to create a custom indicator in the visual script editor. Don't forget to remove the do signal if you want to use it as an indicator, or you can leave it in and use it as a, its own bot. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below or join us on Discord. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. And as always, until next time.